down to Milwaukee. We're just going to spend the day there and then we're driving back, which means about six hours in the car today. So we thought it might be a good time to give you guys kind of uh, the backstory of us, like um, how we met and how we ended up where we are today. So, um, you want me to start? Or? Yeah, yeah, you go ahead. Okay, um, we met in the summer of 2003, and at that time, I was a divorced mom, working full-time, um, five kids. I had uh, Jeffrey, Joseph, Jacob, Jason, and Jeremy, and I was working at a hospital in um, downtown Milwaukee, and uh, I had been divorced for a couple of years by then, and besides working at the hospital, I went to my parents' house almost every day because my grandma lived with them and um, my mom was taking care of her. She was uh, bedridden at that time with Alzheimer's. And so I would go there, um, usually for a little bit of respite care so my mom could run the store or do errands or whatever, just to hang out, see grandma, that kind of stuff. And then I also um, go by my sister a lot. Um, my kids loved hanging out with her kids, and so we just visit. And uh, it was one of those days that I had gone by my sister that uh, her husband had said, you know, oh, he, he met a new guy at work, um, his boss or the foreman or something, that he thought I would be interested in. And I said, I don't think so, because I'm not interested in dating. And uh, my sister, being the bossy pants that she is because of, you know, she's my older sister. She said, well, too late. We already made a date. So uh, my sister and her husband, one of my brothers and his wives, were all going to be meeting up with this guy uh, that Friday night, and I was supposed to come and meet up with them after I got done taking care of Grandma so my parents could go out to dinner. And I didn't want to go, but I did. And that's how we ended up meeting. Now we're going to hear Paul's side of it. Go ahead, Paul. Well, so my, my story is a little different. Um, I am not from the state of Wisconsin. Don't hold it against me, but I'm originally from the state of Illinois. And lived in Illinois my whole life until I went into the service. Came out of the service and still lived in Illinois for a couple of years and then moved to Wisconsin because of a uh, job change. And ended up at the first time going into the Madison area. So uh, it was a few years before I ever got to the Milwaukee area. And uh, I was a divorced father of four. Uh, two of my kids were older and grown by the time me and Sandra met. And then I had two that I had full custody of living with me. And um, uh, Michael, the youngest, I think was about uh, probably about six, and Brianna was probably around eight at the time. And uh, I ended up uh, moving to Milwaukee uh, because of a through through a marriage, and ended up getting a divorce there. And uh, we were living in a uh, duplex. I was living on the top floor with my two younger kids in a split level duplex. When uh, Sandra and I met uh, in Milwaukee. Okay. Well, to be a little more accurate, um, my four older boys were all teenagers at the time, and so were Paul's two older kids. And um, his two younger ones um, were five and seven, close to six and eight, and Jer was seven. And I just, I really remember that because um, Paul's two younger ones, Michael and Brianna, Jeremy and Brianna were the same age. They were both um, seven. So anyhow, um, we ended up, you know, living together, getting married, uh, living in Milwaukee, and um, during that time, it was crazy nuts all time. Um, I started selling on eBay. I sold for years on eBay. I started with uh, books. I love selling the old books, but I also sold 
a bunch of other stuff, vintage items. I liked um, being able to find the older stuff that people were looking for because they were just so grateful. They thought it was, you know, a book or a tablecloth or something that they remembered from their childhood and didn't think they'd ever see again, and they did. And Paul started his own um, remodeling business at that time. And just a lot of family stuff was going on. It was during the early years that my dad came to live with us because he and my mom sold their house in Milwaukee and bought one two hours away. And my mom um, went up there to live. She found a job right away, but he, my dad needed to stay in the Milwaukee area to work a couple more years. And so he lived with us five days of the week and went up by her on the weekends or occasionally she came down. So, plus we had all the kids and their friends and dogs and whatever. It was crazy years and... Um, oh, we had my sister living with us for a while, my youngest sister, so that was... Uh, we had a lot of people. The kids grew up and moved away, but then, the older ones that is. But then a couple of them came back. Um, we had kids in the service, three of them went, the, four of them went to the service, and uh, it was just crazy times, crazy times, I'd say, and uh, it was when the three younger ones were almost teenagers or becoming teenagers when we really decided to get out of the city. Um, I'd say around 2007 was when I started uh, really getting into prepping but we were still in the city then. And um, I think it wasn't until 2011 or 12 that we finally moved outside of the city. And meanwhile, my dad's still living with us. Um, over the years, my dad ended up living with us for seven years. And in that time, my mom passed away. And the boys were, de were deployed all at the same time. And just a, a whole bunch of stuff went on at that time, and uh, we moved outside of Milwaukee. Not real far. We were in the suburbs, but in a rural area of the suburbs. And then uh, we stayed there for a few years until the three youngest became adults, or near adults. And then, uh, well, while we were there, that's when we really started. Uh, homesteading. So when we moved there, um, that's when we first started getting all our animals. And like most people, we started off with chickens. But shortly thereafter, we got uh, Nigerian dwarf goats. And we also got um, ducks. And Paul started uh, raising quail. And um, the quail just really took off. Um, we had hundreds of quail and just could never keep up with the egg production, uh, the egg demand, I mean. Um, Paul was selling eggs, shipping them around the country for other breeders, but then locally we got a lot of people coming to buy them to eat. And what was interesting about that was a lot of them were Eastern European were Asians and they really believed in the power of the quail egg whereas a lot of Americans were kind of really unaware about it. Um, we also sold meat and we ate quail too. It was really good eating. Small but still good and so um, that's pretty much what we raised out there and of course we did all the gardening and learning more of our homesteading skills. The three younger kids um, were teenagers by then. Oh, we had a pair of fox at that time, too. Yeah, we had fox. Um, Arctic fox, Paul, or yeah. something yeah. like that. Yeah, because it was uh, for breeding purposes. People were starting to buy foxes to raise indoor, domesticated. I personally did not like having the fox. Um, they do make really weird noises and they smell them. So uh, we didn't have them too long, but yeah, uh, we had them. And uh, we loved that place, it was, but it was a really huge house. 
And so uh, Paul had made my dad an apartment downstairs, so that was nice. He had that uh, big chunk of the lower level with uh, him and his dogs. And the kids loved it, and we just we had a really great time then. But then they, they got grew up. They were um, turning of age, and they wanted to move out, and the house was getting too big, and so we ended up moving to a smaller place. Uh, about an hour away from there and we continued to raise our chickens and ducks and pheasants and um, the quail but um, we had a very unfortunate accident one year one of the kids uh, we were gone that day or something so one of the kids was in charge of feeding all the birds and taking care of them and Somebody ended up knocking a heat lamp in the brooder room and killed all of our quail chicks and, and the chicken chicks and all of that, and it was just terrible. And uh, it was shortly after that that Paul decided to um, stop raising the quail. And part of that was it's just he was also really busy at work, and he was spending hours a day after work um, taking care of the quail and shipping eggs and so um, that's when he got out of that and um, life just changed a lot shortly after that um, my dad had moved to an assisted living place because he wanted to stay in Milwaukee in the Milwaukee area because of doctors and stuff like that which was fine but uh, in the long run, he ended up uh, passing away. The kids all moved away, and then the city came through wanting to buy the house. That's when they were giving me all the hassle with my chickens. And so we had already bought the off-grid cabin, but um, we had been working on it here and there. Kind of hard to go up there in the winter months. But we hadn't planned on moving into it full time for yeah at least a, year, a two. year or two. Yeah. But because of health reasons too, and that my health started deteriorating. I uh, had severe arthritis in both of my hips, and daily it was getting worse and worse. Where I had to have both uh, hip replacements done uh, in order just to walk. So uh, between you know the my health problems and then kind of being forced to, to sell to the city uh, pushed us two years probably faster to do the off-grid uh, life that we wanted to. We wanted I wanted to keep working uh, for a few more years and uh, we could put some more money away to make it a little bit more financially easy, easier for us to live off-grid but because of health uh, that just became, became uh, a no-brainer for us and we were pretty much did it a couple years faster than we, we, we plan on doing. So my dad was, uh, uh, my background, my dad um, kind of taught me uh, a lot when I was growing up. He was very much in a sustainable living. He was uh, an avid uh, fisherman and hunter. Uh, he was a, uh, he coon hunted professionally, raised a lot of coon dogs. We did a lot of fishing. So he taught me how to hunt, he taught me how to fish. Uh, he taught me how to trap. Uh, he taught me how to live off the land. He taught me how to, you know, grow your own food. Uh, you know, taught, taught, taught me how to be my own man. Uh, uh, my dad's still alive. He actually lives down in Missouri now. Uh, he's gotten, because of his age, he's kind of gotten away from that now. He likes more of the creature comforts now. You know, he loves the idea of just turning on a switch and getting your lights and not worrying about it, just paying your bill or flushing your toilet, which is completely different than Sandra and I's living now, living off grid. Um, and then plus, plus with my military background, so it wasn't, you know, it was, it was just pretty much a way of life for me to convert over to the off-grid life. And Sandy was doing uh, really into it a lot more than I was after we got together because I already lived this kind of lifestyle and it was something new to her being a city girl and, you know, from going into the prepping and uh, mode into, uh, you know, homesteading and, uh, and then deciding for us both that it's time that the kids are grown that we're, we're going to live off grid. Um, but, you know, basically hearing all everybody else's war stories of living off grid and everything, um, it hasn't been bad for us. Um, I think we went into it 
with a lot of education as far as we did a lot of research and stuff before we went into it, so we kind of had a pretty good game plan uh, going on before we went into uh, the off-grid life. However, every day is still a learning experience and we're learning every day. But uh, I think uh, compared to a lot of people that we've heard from, we had a, we had a pretty good advantage on them. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm thinking we got into, well, I started with the prepping and that, but Paul and I, um, as a couple, you know, we could see the writing on the wall. Um, we don't like the way the world is going, and we haven't for a few years. Um, we're also tired of the craziness of city life and um, just all the hubbub that goes with it. And, you know, um, just want to get back to basics, just live a simpler life. And then, you know, the craziness of the world with, um, you know, the politics and world powers and everything that's going on. The off-grid lifestyle for us is like the ultimate backup plan. Um, who knows what's going to go on in this world, whether it's, you know, some kind of natural disaster or a war, whatever. Um, we want to know that we can try and take care of ourselves as best we can without having to rely on too many services. Um, no man is an island and we all need each other. We know that. But we're happier, you know, doing more for ourselves. You know, just like you guys. Um, try and do a little bit more for yourself and rely less on the big corporations of the world. So, uh, any last words, Paul? Um. No, I think uh, you cut it up pretty pretty much. I don't think I could ever change my life and go back. I love the solitude that we have. I love being able to come home, uh, be at our cabin, uh, never, ever, ever hearing an ambulance or a police car or any of that, not having to worry about watching the 10 o'clock news and wondering in the city how many people got killed today. I mean, now you turn on the 10 o'clock news and the biggest biggest report is uh, how, uh, pork, how pork bellies did on the stock exchange that day. So it's a complete different life uh, than, than we were both accustomed to. But uh, when people come up and visit us now from the city, uh, they're just amazed of how much different of a life it really, really is. And most of them really don't ever want to go back. And they're always coming up and wondering how they can build their own place on our property. So I got a feeling that eventually on our land that uh, several of the kids as they get older that they will probably want to build on our property too or, or get, it, do, 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 uh, get more involved in a self-sustainable life. Okay, so that was uh, that. That's how we met and how we ended up where we are today. Thanks for watching you guys. We'll be talking to you soon. Take care.